Well, and um, China is very good. Yes, it's very good. They had a broken rating for $14. <coughs> <coughs> on the air or on the internet we're going to be televising live so if you don't want to be on the camera kind of sit back here in the back uh, we don't pay royalties but you guys are very much appreciated <laughs> anything you hear here is on an educational basis so we always say consult with other financial certified advisors medical advisors other advisors so before you act on anything heard here at talk shop that's our legal stuff all right, are you ready? We're going. Okay, welcome to Talk Shop. Are you going to do the countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Talk Shop, and we appreciate you guys being here, and we appreciate you guys being here in person. These are the real, these are the real hardcore networkers right here. But welcome. Talk Shop offers free education and networking to anyone interested in business or real estate. If you're interested in business or real estate, you're where you belong, right here every Wednesday. And uh, I'm going to turn our meeting over to our MC, Troy McDonald with Aaron McDonald Insurance Agency. Thank you, Joe. Uh, well, welcome to Top Shop. We, this is kind of a sparse crowd here, but an enthusiastic uh, crowd. Good to see Billy again. He's been, uh, been here after a few weeks ago, and it was uh, nice to hear about his products. You know, I went to a state sale, so I did not see Lorraine there, but my wife and I, and I picked up back in the little children's book, um, a children's book. <laughs> and I was looking through them and I found this little bo uh, booklet that I was reading and it starts out on this. Lorraine, how do they usually start out most times? Once, Once upon, upon a time. time. Well, that's what this one started out at. Once upon a time, a few years ago, a mortgage company needed sales. They needed to hire someone with go. They needed someone with great energy, <laughs> experience, and all that jazz who could inspire their company and bring back lots of pizzazz. They found what they needed in a wonderful lady named Jill. Joe, excuse me, <laughs> or Jill. Uh, Joe, <laughs> she has ethics, charm, and a woman that's always on the and as I read the final chapter and the final, excuse me, as I read the final page in the final chapter, both Joe and Evolve lived happily ever after. Joe Garner, top salesperson for Evolve during the month of October. Joe Garner. Oh, that's <laughs> he is something else. He, he is imaginative. Uh, I am Joe Garner. I'm in the mortgage business, and I do uh, mortgages for refinances and purchases. I do some of Pat Goldstein's uh, customers. Thank you, Pat. And uh, I do them all over the country, not just in Memphis, but uh, all over the country, every state. Uh, right now, we're in the uh, middle of the major regulation changes that this gone into effect, and I have good news for everybody. It's not so bad. It's actually pretty smooth. So. Uh, my team, my personal team, and I have trained like the Navy. That's why I tell everybody we've been training on this for months, and we think we've got some tricks of the trade that will help you get through the process really smoothly and very quickly. So I am Joe Garner. Invest your dollars in a mortgage that makes sense. Thank you, Joe. You know, uh, I was looking at her number that she got from her company, CFO, and she did $1,700,000. And thirty thousand dollars during the month of October. Wow. 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 Now, as impressive as that number is, we also seem like ladies are just leaping everywhere. I wish the good men are going to step up, but my wife uh, and also you can see at Aaron McDonald's office did forty-three percent of the total sales. Top salesperson like Joe was by far. May I introduce my <laughs> lovely wife? and top sales producer, Lynn McDonald. Well, I've got three topics I'm gonna try to zip through them. First is our talk shop flyer. And those people that advertise should be very glad 
This goes out to BNI groups, uh, to the Memphis investors groups, and I would just suggest to any of you, um, if you have clients that you see a topic here that pertains to them, just stick it in the mail or email it, fax it to them. But we really need to utilize these because this is great advertising throughout the rest of the year. Speaking of the rest of the year, we had a tremendous event that not a whole lot of people got to witness, but last week we gave out swim scholarships. <laughs> now we will do it again, but we had 15 middle schoolers here. Oh. They were precious. We got to hear four essays, why they wanted to learn to swim. And um, I think Joe captured most of it on video. So we'll probably be using this in our motivational moment. But to earn more money for more scholarships, put this date on the calendar, December 16th. Miss Vanna is going Christmas shopping. And if you haven't been to an old bag sale, it is fun, fast and furious. Uh, Lance Walker will be here to um, talk about selling homes by auction, but also he will be auctioning off old bags. And every bag will have something of a $25 value so, um, and there'll be some big items too, but nobody will know to the very end what is in the purse that you buy. So we are looking for people to attend them to buy. We are also looking for contributors. If your company has product or you just are generous and would like to give a gift certificate, we would be very happy to take your donations. And then number three, um, it's just all state. Um, we are uh, eager to serve you. Uh, we do things a little differently at our agency. We come to your closing. We always bring a smile and cookies and a little happy. We also now can insure households with high-risk dogs, and that is hot off the press. So if you know somebody who has a family Rottweiler pet that just can't find insurance elsewhere, please give us a try, because when you're with Allstate, you're in good hands always. Thank you, dear. All right, let's bring her out there. The gold standard step into the microphone. Pat Goldstein. Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited that Brad's here. I've been using his warranties. They are awesome. Awesome. The real estate market has slowed down just a little bit, as it always does this time of the year. But I'm still going strong, partly because I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. At least I hope I do by the <laughs> I do. It really helps that I've been on the Tennessee State Forms Committee for the past few years, helping shape the forms that we use in contracts. That way, I know how to fill them out properly. Sometimes I get a contract from another agent who may be not quite as well informed. And it works to my client's advantage because I know how to do that. Most of the time, though, I will tell them, you really need to do it this way because that's the right thing to do. And that is one of the things that I do pride myself in. I do the right thing for my clients, for everybody in the transaction. But I'm always on my client's side, getting them to closing with the least possible problems. Most of the time, they have no idea what's going on <laughs> when I'm solving them. And on that note, don't forget, Pat Goldstein, the gold, gold standard. standard. Yes. With? Yeah, she's a girl that likes to dance. She's a girl that likes to swing. She's always the realtor to, with her customers that does the right thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Boy, it's a boy today. All right, let's see. We got, of course, the swim scholarship. Everybody's friend. We got a few more sales here we do. Thank you, uh, Rita. Just came. I mean, uh, yeah. Rena? Rena. Sorry, Rena. Yeah, I said hello to Rena and then I forgot her name. Well, let's do the other introductions here. Here's a girl named after a computer company. Dell. Come on, Dell. Please. <laughs> Good morning. As a communication expert in the areas of public speaking and authorship, I turn nervous, rambling talkers into confident, purposeful communicators. And I turn writers into authors. I'm Dell. Look me up on the web at speakthroughme.com. Thank you, Dell. Uh, here's a companion I did not see at the station. We have this in common at least here. <laughs> it's addictive. It sure is. <laughs> right. We think we're going to get one little more bargain. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine Ferguson with eBiz Solutions.
Commission, as well as with Wilder Systems. Uh, we have computers covered the whole way. So uh, we, the eBiz is really personalized and, and solves your problems of anything you want to do with your computer, more on the software side. So it's a real compliment to the Wilder System who helps uh, really put in that network and get it going. Uh, Lorraine Ferguson, eBiz Solutions. And you said your new company's doing well. She enjoys your voice. Billy, come up and tell us how Geiger's doing here with promotional products, please. Good morning. I'm Billy Mickle with Guider. We increase uh, your brand awareness through promotional products. Uh, we have more than polo shirts, screen print t shirts. We have anything with, uh, you want to put your name on any type of promotional product, as well as we do printing the marketing materials. At this time of year, we're doing holiday gifts. So if you need anything for your clients for your, or associates for your holiday, please give me a call. Billy Nickel with Geiger. Um, my phone number is 901-233-1487. If I can't get it, you don't need it. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. That's a great tagline. If I can't get it, you don't need it. Okay. Michael, come on up. This guy's a real go-getter. He gave a little <laughs> agency here a few weeks ago, and it was really impressive. Michael, please. Uh, I'm Mike Stewart from Data Management Systems. I dominate internet search engines for my clients, limited number of clients. Basically, I've spent years thinking about how does Google want to help you and how do they want to hurt you, and how, can get, how can we make them help you and not hurt you. Yeah. Uh, Mike Stewart with Data Management Systems. All right, thanks, Mike. Here we go. Should be working on the other side. All right, I owe this lady some money because I tried her energy products and I liked them. <laughs> Rita, did you forget I owed you some money, huh? She gave me a box. She said, I'll collect for you later. Our right? <laughs> printer's not working right now. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Rena Lindsay, Lindsay Health and Wellness. Did you happen to see the news last night? Mark Kelly was on there, and he is one of our Shackley consumers for several years. He takes them in space. I was real impressed. I wanted to hear everything about it. We have the most, the best, most comprehensive nutritional program in the world. We are the number one nutritional uh, company in the USA. Uh, if you know anyone who really wants to go on a healthy kick, send them to Rena Lindsay, the Shackley Chick. <laughs> Billy, you see all these wonderful taglines everybody <laughs> has here. We're going to wrap. Bradley, we, uh, we're going to have you come up right now, if you would, please. So you just can't. I saw an article in the business uh, journal here. Uh, Service Master, the overall company, had a heck of a profit. So congratulations on you guys contributed to the bottom line. Brett Carter, Service Master by Cornerstone. Service Master is a uh, locally-based company uh, as a pointed out that we are you know, right here in the Memphis area. We are service master by Cornerstone. We are a franchise, independently owned and operated, uh, of service master restore. We do disaster restoration, flooding, fire, smoke damage, mold, trauma, all those things. We do both residential and commercial. And uh, you want everybody to remember if it's not it's not clean until it's cornerstone clean. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Well let's bring up uh, Back up our ex, come on up here, there, young lady. Don't mind my clothes, I'm in disguise as a college student. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Katie with Backup RX, and what we do is we do online data backup. So we keep everything on your computers, your information safe. Um, that's our bread and butter. We do free consultations if you have questions because every plan that we make is custom fit to you. So it's not going to be one of those, oh, it's a flat rate for this or it's a flat rate for that. We're going to find out what works best for you and you're going to get a quoted price that is the best for you. So if you have any questions, call me, Katie, at Backup RX. Thanks, Katie. Katie. <coughs> All right, Bam. I saw this lady and uh, that beautiful uh, blouse on Facebook. She had just gotten a face, uh, Mary Kay's, Mary Kay's facial, and, and, and she would look good and looked extremely pretty and had this blouse. Thank you. Just down 
having your time. Happy to be here. Um, I've loved Mary Kay for 40 years, and that's what I'm talking about right now. Christmas is coming, and I love the Christmas um, gift ideas, and uh, I really have been ignoring the men. I apologize, because you have women in your lives, most of you, and Christmas is coming. <laughs> Your moms, your aunts, your wives, your girlfriends, and etc. So, I'd love to do something special for you. I might even be able to design something from them. Like a, a cool, kind of manly thing, or a, you know, manly thing. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Beverly Borwick Designs, BeverlyBorwickDesigns.com, and 9016100061. Thank you very much. Joker for men, okay? That leaves it, and my wife don't have to use her hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't have to see, of course. Nick, come on up here, please. I tell you what, we had a chance to use Nick here. I had some problems with the TV, and the contest could never get it right. So, but Nick came over in about ten minutes, had the entire system. Ten there. minutes, ten seconds. Well, really <laughs> sooner than that, but it just it took him a while to go through all the all the uh, remotes that we had. <laughs> specializes in video editing and consumer level online broadcasting, which we are currently doing right now to YouTube, to our one viewer. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> in my studio, I try to be as flexible as possible so I can attempt to do any task that's presented to me so I'm not limited to specific types, like specifically weddings or special events. I would like to, I want to be able to do everything that's presented to me. And that's what I intend to do. Thank you, Nick. You know, he was kind enough. He also does, if you don't mind me mentioning this, Nick, I'm going to take the liberty anyway, was uh, he works for uh, Bed uh, Bath & Beyond. And uh, he was kind enough to come over there late one evening because it was a family and friends night, but you had to have an associate or a worker, an employee there that could give you a discount. And uh, Joe Garner and myself were there, and all my lovely wife, Lynn, was buying about $300 worth of stuff, and we were able to get about, what, like 30% off on the reduced price because of Nick's, uh, Nick being there that evening. So we thank you very much, Nick. Uh, would you come up? I've got a uh, roofing guy right here. He looks like he could be out to do some roofing. He's got a nice tan. Please. <laughs> hey, I'm Josh, AJ Roofing, and uh, basically um, I just came to uh, you know get to know more people, make more connections. But um, we do residential and commercial roofing, and uh, you know we've been around. We've got 15 years experience. Plus, the Better Business Bureau, we've got an awesome website that you can check out. And um, <clears throat> we're basically looking for long-term connections and, um, you know, other people to get referrals to. And the uh, number is 901-493-1219. And, uh, yeah, we're the best. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have callbacks, and we fix it the first time. And we're honest, good people. And, um, yeah, AJ Bruce and I'm Josh. All right. <laughs> we'll learn that tagline, AJ Roofing, we're the best. <laughs> that nice touch right there. Well, let's talk about our speaker here. Uh, we got an inspirational moment. Do you want to do the inspirational moment? I can do it real quick. Sure. You can do it really quick. I can. Our motivational moment for Talk Shop. Thank you. You're so sweet. Uh, it comes from, uh, will you, where will you be five years from now? It's a uh, compilation of different articles from different writers. And it's, uh, most people don't aim too high and miss. They aim too low and they hit. Uh, there's a one person in a thousand who can write down his or her most exciting dreams without at the same time telling themselves that, you know, this is probably impossible. The truth is, virtually anything is possible. Nothing is too good to be true. That's the good news. What would you attempt if you knew that you could not fail? Write down a dream that you would love to pursue if you absolutely knew that you could attain it. It may be more doable than you think. I want to share with you a quick story about Kyle McDonald trading a paperclip for a house. This is going to be for you, Pat. <laughs> Thinking big, Kyle McDonald started small with a paperclip to be exact. He posted it on Craigslist as a barter and got a fish-shaped pen for it. 
He then traded the pen for something better. One trade led to another and another until McDonald finally found himself the owner of a three-bedroom house. Give yourself permission to aim high in work and in life. Take time to dream and plan. So many of our dreams at first seem impossible. This is from Christopher Reeve. So, so many of our dreams at, at first seem impossible. Then they seem improbable. And then when we summon the will, they soon seem inevitable. That's from Christopher, Christopher Reeve, and that's our motivational moment. Thank you. Okay, folks, I'm looking for ours. I got a box of paper clips. <laughs> I'm looking for just a match of, you know, 1.2 and 1.5 million. Well, let's talk about this great guy. Uh, both my wife and Pat talked highly of him, Brad Sterling. He's been a little a bio on him. He's been in the real estate business his whole life. How about this? His father's been in that business for over 60 years. Uh, brother for 25 years, and Brad has been inspecting for 18 years and is now in the warranty sales. Uh, what he will do is he will uh, discuss home warranties and understanding uh, home warranties as it relates to risk management. So let's give a warm, top shop welcome to Brad Sturman. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Joe, if I could make a recommendation. I think I should have been referred to Dell before I came uh, to give this speech. Uh, Dell, I hope you don't use this as your before example. <laughs> and the reason is because I've got a bunch of notes scribbled down. This is probably on what not to do. I'm going to try to stay uh, on point uh, best I can. Uh, first of all, a little bit about myself. You know, clearly, we're discussing about home warranties, but it's hard to deny the fact that I've been in home inspections for over 18 years. Um, in that time, I've inspected over 11,000 houses. My company has inspected over 16,000 houses. Uh, and in that period of time, I've seen a lot of really, really great houses, and I've seen a lot of really, really bad houses. <laughs> but that said, um, the experience that I had in inspections has really served me well moving into the new field uh, of home warranties. Um, now, in the last year, I was offered this job uh, with HWA, or Home Warranty of America, um, and I, I felt like I didn't owe the home inspection industry anything else <laughs> after the time <laughs> served. <laughs> Sounds like prison, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, but that said, you know, it dovetailed perfectly into that field. Uh, I'm still able to market to the same people that I've had relationships with in real estate, uh, and it also utilizes all my knowledge from inspections. Uh, who better to talk to about uh, a warranty claim than someone who knows uh, all the ins and outs of all the systems uh, inside the house. Uh, now, I'm assuming everybody here has, has heard of the term risk management, uh, especially our uh, insurance people. Um, has anybody ever heard the term risk eradication or risk elimination? <laughs> risk management is kind of a corporate speak, uh, but they use the term management because it's impossible to eliminate risk. Uh, you basically assume that it's going to happen and you try to manage it. Um, I was in a traffic accident several years ago and um, th this, I will just never forget this moment and, and how it dovetails into risk management and so somehow how ridiculous risk management can be. Uh, but I'll never forget the guy pulled it right out in front of me and it took several seconds. Uh, I could see the color of his eyes before I slammed into his driver's side door. Uh, scary, scary situation. Uh, after I kind of woke up from the days because my airbag punched me in the face, um, I got out of my car to see his car, which was probably 50 feet away from mine. Mm -hmm. And I kind of stumbled over to his car and I did not recognize his face. Uh, it was just completely covered in blood. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the scarier things that ever happened to me. And it wasn't because I hurt myself, it's because I hurt somebody else. Now, mm -hmm. obviously it was his fault. Uh, but it, it was a really scary moment. So after the uh, paramedics and everybody took a look at him and I was constantly saying, is he okay, is he okay, is he, is he okay? They said, yeah, he's got a mild concussion and some uh, head lacerations. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I thought I killed him, really. Mm -hmm. And so it affected me for weeks and, and really even months. I'm like, gosh, well, that could happen to anybody. I mean, he had a seatbelt on. Uh, you know, clearly he, he pulled out in front of me, but it just seemed like such a serious amount of injuries, and I'm thinking, what, what could you do to prevent that? And this is how ridiculous the thought is, you know, if he was wearing like a helmet, 
If she was wearing a football helmet, that would have completely prevented that whole situation. And, and I'm sure from an insurance standpoint, if you could tell your customers, you can protect yourself. You have a 50% chance of having no injuries and traffic accidents if you wear a helmet while you drive around town. <laughs> Who's going to do that? Nobody is. Uh, my hair? <laughs> exactly. And it's always a, a cost versus benefit situation. Uh, what am I getting over what am I giving up? Uh, and so what I'd like to do is discuss risk management as it relates to life in general. Obviously, the wearing a helmet uh, is a significant means to manage your risk, which nobody's going to do. Uh, but then I'd also like to dovetail it into real estate uh, and then finally into home warranties uh, because that's really what we're here to talk about. Now, in real estate, how many forms of risk management happen in a real estate transaction? Somebody please help me out. What's the means of risk management in a real estate transaction? Pat, you're probably the expert here. Writing the contract properly. Writing the contract properly. Anything else happens during the inspect or during the uh, real estate process? I kind of gave it away. Yeah. Home, inspections. <laughs> Home inspections. How many type of inspections can be done on a house? Several. Countless. Termite inspections. You could even argue an appraisal is risk man well, it is risk management for the lender, um, uh, but also the appraiser sometimes are required to do uh, a portion <coughs> of an inspection. Uh, anything else? still under the inspection process. What about mortgage insurance? That's a risk management tool. Uh, there are layers upon layers upon layers within a real estate transaction to protect all the parties that are involved in that transaction. A house is most people's biggest investment uh, in their entire life. And so everybody wants to protect themselves. Realtors want to protect themselves, buyers want to protect themselves, and almost everybody in the transaction wants to protect themselves in some way uh, to manage risk. Um, let's see. Now, how many people know what an inspection is? Uh, I can't help but talk about inspections because I've been in it so long. Uh, it, it always made me laugh every time I meet somebody new uh, and I would tell them that I did home inspections uh, for a living. Uh, one of two things would happen. They would say, oh, you know what? I had the best home inspector. And then they would tell me how great they were because of all the cosmetic things that they told them about their house. Or the second thing would they would say how terrible their inspector was because of all the cosmetic things they didn't tell them about. <laughs> when in actuality, the inspection is really more geared toward mechanical systems. Uh, how is the, the house performing? Uh, and a lot of homeowners aren't really educated on what the purpose of an inspection is. Um, you know, inspections are really more geared towards disclosing the physical condition of the property. Uh, and many times it's hard to know how good an inspector did uh, until you move into the house. Uh, and so um, I'm belaboring this point just because it is very important to empower buyers. And, and if there's any home, home buyers out there, uh, educate yourself on the process of buying a house and what the inspections and, and obviously the warranties entail and how to best utilize those. Uh, Home inspections are really to disclose the physical condition so you know what you're getting. Uh, I always felt my role as an inspector wasn't to tell somebody whether to buy a house or not, but it's just simply to tell them what they're getting. And from that point, they can make an informed decision on whether to buy, whether to negotiate repairs, or whether to negotiate a price. Because uh, many times, especially now how the contract is written, it's almost back to the drawing board uh, if the inspection comes back really terribly. So it is really important to know uh, exactly what you're doing. Uh, let's see. Oh, and not to mention, even within an inspection, there are several things that are outside the scope of an inspection. Uh, a, if you go to the American Society of Home Inspectors, that's the oldest and largest trade organization uh, as it relates to inspections. Most state licensing laws are based upon the ASHE standards of practice. A home inspection is a visual inspection. It's not technically exhaustive. You don't dismantle systems in order to determine their condition. We basically just turn everything off and on. Now, coming from a, a, a veteran of the inspection industry, I can say with a lot of um, almost cockiness that there's a lot of things I can tell you about a house, even with the limited uh, scope of the inspection. Uh, but it always killed me when people would move into the house, they would call me back and say, hey, you didn't tell me about this. And almost always it was things that could have never been discovered on inspection. Uh, there were no stains on the ceiling. There were no, um, you know, no leaks uh, anywhere in the house, and yet now there's a leak. And so, home inspections really go hand in hand with 
home warranties because the inspection is there to tell you about the condition of the property at the time of the inspection, whereas the warranty is there to protect you from failures after the inspection. Now that said, sometimes inspections and warranties can go against one another. Uh, some uh, warranty companies will say, well, the inspector should have found this, which is clearly an omission. Uh, and then some inspectors will go back and say, well, it wasn't that way when I did the inspection, so the warranty company should pay for it. Uh, that said, however, and a, a, a small promotion for HWA, we do honor home inspection reports, uh, which I think is fantastic. If the inspection says that everything was fine at the time of the inspection, we're always going to cover uh, any failed system. So that uh, is a, a nice little feature. Um, that said, however, now as we dovetail into uh, home warranties as it relates to risk management, um, so you, you do all your processes before you buy a house. Uh, you get your inspection done uh, and you move into the house. When it comes to warranties, claims, and risk management, what do you think the highest, what system has the highest number of claims in the house? Anybody want to guess? Fantastic. Most, most specifically, air conditioning. Uh, that is probably the most, uh, uh, the, the one system that has the highest number of claims. After that, what is it? Electrical. Guess again. Plumbing. Plumbing. Over 30% is air conditioning, or almost 36% is air conditioning, almost 33% is plumbing. After that, what do you think it is? Roofs. <laughs> Roofing is a, <laughs> since we got a roofer in the audience, uh, very, Roofing as it relates to warranties, some warranties do cover roofing. Most roofing coverage is incredibly limited, and so honestly, I don't even include roofing <laughs> from a warranty standpoint. After air conditioner, after plumbing, appliances. the next thing is appliances. Yeah, appliances. appliances. And on top of that, because I see claims run across my desk every single day, almost half of claims associated with appliances are washer, dryer, and sure. refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I'll bring that up as most warranty companies don't cover that as a part of their basic policy, you have to add that. So, since we're talking about risk management, what do you do in order to protect yourself? Um, when it comes to warranties, there's, and again, I'm gonna talk about warranties very, very generally. Uh, there are uh, three big players really in the Memphis market, but nationwide there's probably a half a dozen or more um, warranty companies. But most of, of them have tiered pricing policies. Uh, you have a basic, warranty, which is the, the least expensive option, uh, which, by the way, basic coverage sounds great because it covers a lot of the major systems. It usually takes care of your plumbing, your water heater, your built-in appliances, uh, your air conditioner, your water heater, your electrical, uh, all those things. And then there's many times a second tier. The second tier will usually add a few other options, uh, some bells and whistles. And I say bells and whistles many times, that includes your doorbell <laughs> and your security <laughs> systems. <laughs> In addition to that, it usually upgrades the coverage, meaning there are fewer exclusions and limitations uh, compared to your basic plan. And then finally, most warranty companies have a top product, uh, which is their most expensive, and it really eliminates a lot of the out-of-pocket expenses uh, as it relates to warranty claims. Now, if you are a home buyer, or if you are a realtor referring a warranty company, or anybody referring a specific warranty company, if you recommend the bottom product while it's better than nothing expect many many denials and expect many many out-of-pocket expenses and i say that because it there are lots of reasons for denials that are related to things that aren't installed properly pre-existing conditions uh, that is probably the a number one uh, issue when it comes to people who are dissatisfied with their warranty company is pre-existing conditions and or failures due to rust and corrosion. Uh, that is uh, always a hot topic. In fact, if you do a quick Google search mm -hmm. and just say home warranties, the very top product is a strictly online warranty company. They don't have representation. They don't have a sales force. They just sell online and their policy does not cover pre-existing conditions and rust and corrosion. I say that because how many things fail due to rust and corrosion? almost everything related to your plumbing and your heating and air systems. Uh, and water heaters every day. That's exactly right. Yep. And, and so uh, that said, now disaster relief and homeowner's insurance are completely separate from, uh, from home warranty. So uh, many times your, your insurance will pay for subsequent damage, but a lot of times the mechanical uh, failures uh, are on your own dime, depending on the extent uh, of the failure. Um, and so uh, 
the medium product, again, again, will cover more things, uh, but again, not to the top product. And the top product I highlight mostly because uh, warranties have lots of exclusions related to air conditioning. Uh, <coughs> air conditioners, because they're the number one claim item, that means we pay out the most on warranty claims. Uh, warranty claims can come in for many different reasons when it comes to air conditioners. Sometimes it's due to refrigerant, refrigerant leaks. Sometimes it's due to lack of maintenance. Sometimes it's due to systems that aren't matched properly. Many warranties, and I say many, most warranties are going to exclude a claim if a system is mis mismatched. Uh, if an evaporator doesn't match the condenser, oh, I'm sorry, it was improperly installed. Denied. Um, uh, if the uh, system wasn't properly maintained, many times that is a denial. Well, I'm sorry, you as a homeowner didn't do your due diligence uh, to maintain your equipment. Therefore, it's a denied claim. Most top products with warranty companies, however, take that into mind. Uh, it, the, the, you're paying a little bit more, but you're getting a lot of protection. Many times upgrading systems from a basic warranty to a top product is somewhere between $50 and $100. When you, when you think about the additional coverage that you get from a claim standpoint, it almost always saves you thousands. Uh, if you are recommending a warranty policy, and for instance, let's say uh, the seller is offering a warranty, but they're only going to offer a basic plan, I would highly, highly recommend, whether it be through contract negotiations or through just adding it yourself, upgrade your policy. Uh, it is really going to help you, the consumer, uh, and it potentially is going to help uh, the realtor, too, with a lot of angry callbacks. Uh, so I would highly, highly recommend that. In addition to the top product, there are several things that you can add additionally uh, as almost like ancillary coverage. Uh, if you're moving into a house and let's say you've got a, a deep freezer in your garage, uh, let's say the house has a pool, let's have, say the house has a septic system, uh, there are many other optional coverages uh, that can be added to almost every single warranty policy too. And again, from a risk management standpoint, you're moving into a house and you have to assess what am I protecting? What do I have that needs coverage? Now, a lot of times people that have a fridge in their garage, they don't really <coughs> care about it that much. <laughs> it's a 30 year old fridge they've had in there forever and they just have it out there for, uh, you know, for sodas. But if you're a deer hunter <laughs> and you've got a freezer full of meat out there, that probably means a lot more to you uh, than if it's just, you know, sitting out there for, for sodas and, and whatever else. Uh, so adding those, uh, that protection is many times uh, highly recommended. Uh, not to mention, well, I've already discussed, uh, appliance claims are very high. Washer, dryer, and refrigerator is a high rate uh, of claims. Um, those are generally considered portable. Uh, and so a lot of real estate transactions, uh, when you put a policy in place, homeowners take them with them. Uh, and so the new homeowners come in and have to put their own washer and dryer and have to put their own refrigerator in there doesn't mean you're still not going to have an issue with it. Uh, and so I always highly recommend adding those coverages to your policy, again, just to protect you uh, in the event of some failure. Can, can I ask you a quick question sure. about that? Mm -hmm. So um, to qualify for this, um, if, if a tenant or a tenant, home buyer brings their own appliance, you don't get a chance, the company doesn't get a chance to review the, the condition of those that's right, but if you think about it, all warranties don't require an inspection. In fact, none of them require an inspection. Uh, most direct consumer products, they just ask the, the homeowner, are there any pre-existing conditions that we need to know about? <laughs> you know, exactly, and so they, they, it is a risk, and that's why most direct consumer products cost a little more than the real estate product. Uh, we offer a discounted rate uh, for real estate transactions because we have layers of protection uh, that protects uh, our company. There are inspections that take place. Um, uh, most, I would say, <coughs> a vast majority of home buyers are getting an inspection prior to. Refrigerator, washer, dryer are not inspected in general. Many times aren't. And again, that, that is a uh, something that we do know. Uh, but in the same instance, uh, what I usually <coughs> recommend is if you are getting an inspection, even if the washer, dryer, and refrigerator are going, still get the inspector to notate at least anything that is might be, you know, because again, you can look behind a washer and dryer and you can see that the, the fittings are leaking, or you can look behind a refrigerator and tell if there's a leak at the ice maker. 
mean, there's things that still can be done uh, from a uh, from an inspection standpoint that can uh, help mitigate any risk uh, for the, the new buyers once they move in. Um, so anyway, I, I always highly recommend that. Again, it does end up costing more, but uh, I believe that it's, it's valuable from the standpoint of what you're getting uh, as it relates to uh, percentage of claims. So, yes, sir. Brad, I was going to ask you, is, is your home warranty, is that assumable by the new buyer if he elects to do so? If there is a current policy in place and you don't want to, and again, it's a lot of times it depends on negotiations. Many times <coughs> homeowners want a full year uh, of coverage, um, but you can transfer it. If you have a current policy in place, and let's see, let's say there's eight months left in the policy, you can transfer that eight months and then prorate the additional months out. Uh, to get that buyer uh, coverage. So that's a, a, a great question. Yes? Um, is it becoming more common for it to be sort of like a selling strategy to uh, have a house be accompanied by a warranty, let's say for the first year that the buyer buys it? In the Memphis market, yes. Okay. Uh, different parts of the country, it's not as popular. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, certain parts of the country's warranty is just, there's not a, a huge usage mm -hmm. uh, right. of warranties. Uh, in the Memphis market, it is almost without fail. And you're providing a warranty, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah. is, it is assumed that they're going to provide a warranty. Yes? Um, question regarding if you're in a tight market, I'm speaking from experience, where you don't have a lot of comps when you go to either reevaluate your house or sell it, um, and there's a big difference in the level of repairs that have been done, meaning one might still have the pink and black tile in the bathroom versus <laughs> totally remodeled, or one might still have the paneling, mm -hmm. you know, versus new sheetrock. How does that factor in? Uh, and, and the other issue is, is flooding. If, if, even if you don't have flood in, need flood insurance, the fact that your comps do include houses that have flood insurance, how do you, how do you offset that when you're, when you're getting a home inspected for evaluation? Well, um, when it comes to home, now is the question related to home warranties or home inspections? Home inspections. Home inspections. Um, the inspection is very specific because it will, or we always state that the purpose of the inspection is deter to determine the condition of the property right. at the time of the inspection. Right. We don't pull permits or go to the code office to see at what time systems were upgraded or changed. I'm not going to do title searches. I'm not going to tell you if it's in the floodplain. Right. All of those things are outside the scope of an inspection. Gotcha. So whether or not that is there uh, or not, it doesn't really fall within the, the guise of an inspection. Um, and so, again, that kind of behooves the, the buyer and or realtor uh, to do due diligence to determine. And again, insurance is going to have to tell you that, right? Yeah. If, if you're in a floodplain. Yes, and the mortgage company, that's the first thing they check when they, isn't it, Joe, when they get the address checked to it, see if it's in a floodplain. Right. It's just tough when you when you have factors like that mm -hmm. and you're using the other comps in the area that don't have the upgrades. Right. Um, and so <coughs> you haven't been in those other homes. You're only inspecting the home that you're in. Mm -hmm. So that might be worth $100,000, right. but the bathrooms haven't been upgraded, the well, paneling's still on the walls, and it's in a floodplain versus... What I would suggest, because honestly, I think that has more to do with appraisal than it does inspection. Uh, gotcha. inspection inspections assess condition. Yes. Appraisal assesses value. Okay. Uh, and so how value relates to uh, other homes in, in, in the neighborhood right. uh, really has more to do to its condition. Yes. Now, the lines are blurring. Uh, in, in that industry it. Yeah, because, because appraisers are now required yeah. to do yes. simple inspections, which right. I don't like at all. Now, I usually joke with all of my buyers, the last person you ever want to give an inspection report to is to a lender. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're going to be like, whoa, 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 you got to fix this, you got to fix this. Because again, they're trying to protect their investment as right. well. But, but on the, the flip side of trying to sell a home that you've done all the upgrades to, right. and they're comparing your property to one that's not been upgraded, the detail, I'd love for there to be details, because right. I've been a good you know, steward of the home. I completely agree, and what I usually tell my, my clients on the inspection side mm -hmm. is, you know, it might not directly correlate to appraisal value, right. but it certainly is that warm and fuzzy that you're looking for. Right. Uh, when I go into a house, and by the way, I joke with all my, my, my customers, I've never bought a nice house. Uh, and it's, it's, it's mostly because I know what I'm getting into, right, and I want right. to see an absolute dump that has relatively new systems. Right. <laughs> uh, and 
in a great neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because many times the, the cosmetic defects aren't really inexpensive right. to replace. Yeah. Uh, and most you homeowners. You can paint the paneling or take it down as a cheap product. Right. Yeah. But putting a new air conditioner in, right. oh, bye bye, exactly. five, right. six gram. Uh, those things cost to put a new roof on. Uh, mm -hmm. those, that, that's where you really get hit. Uh, and so, uh, but if I'm consulting a buyer moving into a house, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, hey, look, you've got a lot of cosmetic things which are outside the scope of the inspection, but mechanically speaking, you've got a four-year-old furnace, you've got a two-year-old water right. heater, you've got an approximate five to seven-year-old roof. Uh, you know, these are things that make me very comfortable mm -hmm. purchasing the house. Now, from a seller standpoint, right. again, that's kind of a, a difficult thing to do because you're not, not necessarily getting the appraisal value. Right. But I bet you if Pat Goldstein was your realtor, <laughs> uh, she would say, hey, look, let's upgrade some cosmetic stuff around and try to boost that sale right. price. <laughs> <laughs> Are replacement windows of old drafty windows included in any of that, or is it more on the appraisal side? Uh, that's appraisal side. Okay. Again, I, I've inspected houses that had original windows in it, uh, right. and the, the glazing is all gone, the house right. leaks like a sieve. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, wh whether it be, um, <coughs> you know, a house's energy efficiency um, is also really a more factor. of a, um, it's really not even an inspection standpoint. It's a, you, you have to do floor door tests, uh, air quality, uh, I'm trying to, the, the term is escaping me, me right. now, but, uh, is, I'm sorry? Oh yeah, well that's that's a really really top end. Hers is a, a blower door. It assesses the the energy efficiency of the systems in the house, and it relates to air seal uh, or the, the air seal of the home, right. uh, which is incredibly important to the home's energy efficiency. Sure. Uh, but just as a side note, and I'm going to try not to get too uh, uh, sidetracked. A lot of the problems with mold these days are because of how energy efficient houses yes, are. Yes, exactly, and radon in certain areas. That's of the country. exactly right. Mm -hmm. Old homes are incredibly leaky, and therefore Safe. you have a lot of air <laughs> transfer between right. the outside and inside. So right. it doesn't make it terribly efficient, but it also makes the house more healthy. Um, yeah. uh, uh, healthy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, now I will say this. I, what I'm going to recommend, because that's what everybody says, what would you recommend? If you're going to get a warranty, please, please, please do us all a favor and get the top product. Regardless of what company you go with, uh, the top product is going to take care of a lot of those out-of-pocket <laughs> expenses, which are going to save you money. Um, let's see. Also, I wouldn't recommend a warranty unless you had a local representative. Yeah. It makes a big sense. I had a claim come across my desk where a vendor went out to a house in Olive Branch, Mississippi, and they denied a claim because they said the water pressure was too high. Not in Olive Branch, Mississippi. Uh, and thankfully, because of my experience, I was able to call our, our call center and say, hey, look, that's not going to happen. Uh, this is not a, a legitimate claim. Uh, or a legitimate denial, so we'll be able to send another vendor out and get those things taken care of. So uh, me as a representative, I'm really on uh, the side of the uh, consumer, uh, even though I get paid by the warranty company, um, I market to realtors, so I want the real estate uh, uh, transaction as well as the, the homeowner to be as happy as possible. So, uh, oh, there are well, <laughs> 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 <They're not laughs>
Yes, please. Go. I just want to comment on Brad and on the HWA warranty. Uh, realtors are in the position of selling warranties, including them in the contracts or encouraging the seller as a marketing mm -hmm. tool to put the warranty on the house. And usually what I tell them is the buyer's going to ask for it anyway. You might as well put it on and use it as a tool. And it can get negotiated out, but at least it's there to encourage buyers. Well, you know, the other thing I see is important from the sales standpoint is that this house has been under, you know, a warranty, yes. which means had there been any difficulty, you know, if you take my word, I'm not saying mine personally, but, you know, my word for it, that we, yeah. if there was difficulty, we would have called It's like taking your car in for the required oil change. Yes. You're taking yeah. care of the house yeah. and yeah. getting good products. I worked with yeah. all of the different warranty companies mm -hmm. since the early 90s, and HWA has the undoubtedly best product. And I'm not saying that because Brad is cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now there's a sales. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine now they talk to a, a buyer and say, well, look, here's a home warning and he's really cute and he's really <laughs> going to like him. It yeah. would make home buying easier. He's also <laughs> yeah. very knowledgeable because of being born into a real estate family and having worked at home. That's, a great, that's a great point. But though. what I was going to say, in addition to that, there's no other warranty that includes a refrigerator, washer, and dryer in the basic not basic, the top grade of their basic warranty without having to upgrade and pay, what is it, $15, $25? It's $125 to add to most policies. Wow. And that is just invaluable because refrigerators, washers, and dryers, especially the new uh, all-electronic ones, mm -hmm. do fail. I, I would like to interject one more thing, especially if you work in a deal and a, and a warranty does get negotiated out of the contract, because that does sometimes happen if inspections go awry or appraisals go awry. Uh, the, the first thing they throw out is the warranty, because the seller's not going to pay for it anymore. Mm -hmm. We do provide a payment option. Uh, if, if you can't get it taken care of during closing, uh, to, again, protect the buyer, you can pay either in three monthly installments or month to month which again is that extra layer of protection uh, which takes care of that buyer. So that is an option that we do that I don't believe anybody else does in the real estate deal uh, or in, within the real estate transaction. Yeah, great. Another Thanks. thing that Brad didn't mention is the other two warranty companies that I've worked with in the past put band-aids on everything. Uh, my parents' house, which I put a warranty on in the 90s, has had their heat exchanger changed out twice. Mm -hmm. The evaporator coil needed to be changed out, and they were just going to replace the evaporator coil. Mm -hmm. HWA replaces the system when it needs it. Mm -hmm. They don't go for patching. We, we don't use rebuild parts. Uh, if any time something has to be replaced, a lot of warranty companies will use mm -hmm. reconditioned or rebuild parts. Mm -hmm. We only put in new systems. So that's great. Um, if you have an existing warranty already, is it possible to switch over, or do you have to wait until that agreement's over? Nope, you don't have to. But again, if you already, if it's already paid up, yes. I, you know, unless yeah. you just really want to change, uh, that's okay. just uh, clearly I, I could sell you something uh, very quickly. But from from mm -hmm. your value standpoint, you might as well see the policy out, right. uh, and then at the date, <laughs> ju just again at the date of the renewal, mm -hmm. make sure we so there's no overlap in coverage. Uh, okay. Make sure you get one in place. How about those, Brad? Uh, pretty good right there. Absolutely. Play it out. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Wonderful here. You know, Pat, Dr. One of the things you get out there is a home warranty. Can you imagine? Well, if you had upgraded, you know, and it's just saying, look, you, you got to get a home warranty. Get the best one. Obviously, you heard Brad talk about a wonderful job he did. Not much difference in cost. No, I mean, well, you hate to say, well, I had you upgraded, which means, oh, my goodness. You, you know. could have had the doorbell. Yeah. <laughs> All right, how much money do we have over there for this uh, scholarship? We got a. We have $9. $9. And the reason there's so many tickets in here. Our ticket seller went crazy and said three for a dollar. Oh, <laughs> so we had a fire sale for some people. No, they got, they got more than three. It's next week. Oh, next week. Why don't you tell us? It is a year in tax tips. It's not too late with Wiss Laughlin. Oh, oh, all right. right. Yeah. You're going to use a computer system or you're going to use that old fashioned thing that we always like? Well, I've got, I mean, I've got, I have a, a projector and, you know, and computer that match. You're going to talk about your in tax tips. It's not too late for businesses or oh, individuals. Well, I was a, well, let's, let's take a vote. Let's take a vote. I just gave one on businesses yesterday, and I can give, I can give one that's more of an overall that covers individual and business. Overall, but you got it Overall, I think we'll be, we see a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. The overall is going to give you, you know, more coverage. All right, let's do it. Good, let's do it. This sounds great. All right, uh, where's uh, Brad? Come over here. Come on, Mr. Uh, Carlo, and then we're going to have you talk about what you're giving away. All right. The Lynn McDonald. Uh, <laughs> 404 
2105. 2105. Anybody's got it? All right. Michael. All right. All right. Giving it back. Thank you, Michael. All right, well, tell us what you got for a door prize. We have a lovely bottle of Oregon Pinot Noir. Oh, 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 all right. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, the car is slow. Well, honey, take out every card but ours. <laughs> and mine. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.